All right, all right. LDBC, this is your boy Coach Sheldon Harrison. You're live, live, live. I'm Coach Sheldon Harrison, Combat Sports Show Live. Folks, you know something? I noticed something. Deontay Wilder been catching a lot of hell. Well, you know, not because of like, uh, you know, we all know because of the uniform and glove gate. But no, nah, he's been catching a lot of hell for losing. Hey, so let me get this right. So, AJ and Klitschko, Povetkin, and all these people, they can lose. And, you know, they still got the heart of a champion. But all of a sudden, Deontay Wilder loses a fight, and now, now he's a bum. How do we explain this, y'all? The man's only got one recorded fight on his record, and he's a bum. And he lost to, you know, a top fighter. Because, you know, many of you people are saying that Tyson Fury, well, he's a top fighter. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then, if you're saying that Wilder's a bum, then really you're inadvertently tearing down Tyson Fury. You're saying that, you know, Tyson Fury beat a bum. That Tyson Fury's win over Deontay Wilder is insignificant. Like, I noticed that. Like, we, we you know, even Mike Coppinger agrees with this, that, you know, because a guy got a couple of losses, that don't make him, you know, washed up. But for some reason, people just seem to think that fighters that lose a fight, they're washed up. And that's part of the reason why some of these damn fighters, they, they don't want to take a chance. Okay, I don't even think these fighters are afraid of losing. I think what it is that these fighters, they feel like if they lose, they feel like the fans will, you know, won't follow them as much. And, you know, their stock will drop. And, of course, you know, that, that directly relates, you know, to their income. You know, I understand. I get it now. You know, and, you know, and I'm going to think real, real hard. I'm going to do an internal uh, search in myself to think really hard before I, I see another fight is afraid. And I'm going to start looking at the circumstances of them, you know, possibly losing. It's the fans. It's the fans, and then you get, like, the old media that come in, and, you know, they try to make it seem like that it's just, you know, if a fighter loses, well, that's the worst damn thing ever. That's the worst damn thing ever if a fighter loses a fight. So Wild is a bum, but AJ's not. Klitschko not a bum. I mean, to all, the, to all the fighters that lost the fight, Pacquiao not a bum. You know, Pacquiao done lost the fight to several decent opponents, but he not a bum, okay? Deontay Wilder loses to a good opponent in Tyson Fury, and, and now he was always a bum. Like, we're just going to forget about the other people that he knocked out. See, this is what I keep telling y'all in boxing, okay? I don't even believe in the word double standard. You know, double standard, that's another word for the, for the term racist, okay? I don't even, when people say double standard, oh, okay, they're just saying that that other person racist. Okay, I got it. See, that's what I started saying. Because, it, you know, it don't really make a bit of sense, okay? Are there things that Wilder need to work on? Yeah, before he engages Tyson Fury in another, in another fight, okay? Deontay Wilder, he's got to clean some stuff up, man. Wilder got to clean this shit up. He got to. I mean, number one, Deontay Wilder got to keep his hands up. That's, that's rule number one. You got to keep your hands up. This man, he keeps his hands down at a relaxed level, you know, right below his chin and, you know, like toward his chest area. And, you know, he was sit, he was a sitting duck. He made it relatively easy for Tyson Fury to jab the hell out of him. You know, he, he's got to do that. And then number two, he's got to stop looking for the knockout punch in every throw. Wilder got to throw some, some nice little shots in between to set up the right hand. And I noticed that Wilder don't do that. Wilder would throw that right hand and a fighter on Tyson Fury's skill level, he's going to see the right hand coming a mile away. He's going to see it. And for the most of the time, he's going to be able to evade it. Like Wilder will reach back and grab and then throw an overhand right. Tyson Fury not going to fall for that. Wilder got to shorten that right hand up a little bit, man, and tighten up some and throw straight right hands. Okay, it'll be harder for Fury to adjust and, and, and move to that. And also, too, you know, Wilder got to get dirty in the clinch. He got to get dirty on the inside. Like, Wilder will try to create separation and try to, you know, get leverage on that right hand. Wilder need to start utilizing his inside game. He need to start utilizing uppercuts when Fury get close to him. And then when Fury put him in a headlock, man, he's got to learn how to turn Fury around and spin him around. You know, like, there's some things that Wilder need to do. He can't go in there with this game plan that he's just going to knock Fury out. It just, it, it can't be. It can't be. that there, there has to be some change on his side. He's got to do something. That's going to make this a different fight. Because Tyson Fury and every other heavyweight, now they're looking at, oh, okay, this is what I do to Wilder, okay? I gain weight, I, I be in superb cardio shape, and I lean on him. And I wear him down. That's what I can do. And I'm telling you, that's why Wilder was so, he was so tired and gassed, because Tyson Fury was laying on him. He was leaning on him, putting that weight on him, and then he was bullying Deontay Wilder around the ring. 
See, Deontay Wilder can't have that, man. He can't have that in the next fight. It's got to be a rough and dirty affair. Wilder got to make it dirty. He got to make it dirty. If he tries to fight a clean fight with Tyson Fury, he might as well not even go in there and fight him. He's going to lose. Okay? Deontay Wilder need to make this a rough and dirty affair. Okay? He need to do it, and that need to be at the top of his list to make this a dirty fight. Don't worry about losing points. Don't worry about being deducted. Don't worry about what the ref's saying. Deontay Wilder got to go in there looking for the finish by any means necessary. I mean, hell, that's what Fury did. I mean, Fury came in there with an ill-fitting glove. Fury was in there. You know, he was cheating. He was putting him in the hell up. You know what? It's a fight. Okay, let's get out of this mindset that Fury cheated. So what he cheated? I think Deontay Wilder need to go do the exact same thing. Put this fight on even playing fields. Kick this man in the nuts if you have to. But you're going to have to. That's the thing. But just because Deontay Wilder lost to Tyson Fury, it don't make him a bum. Hell, he lost to a good-ass fighter. At least Deontay Wilder wanted to fight the best. He tried to fight Povetkin, but what happened? Povetkin tested positive for steroids. He tried to fight Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker wanted no parts of that. He tried to fight AJ, but people say, oh, but he turned on $100 million. And then when you listen to Wilder actually talk about that, you know, Wilder even said that AJ wasn't guaranteed in that $100 million deal. So I guess Wilder's supposed to go over there. He's supposed to go over there and fight AJ. Or, no, he's supposed to go over there and fight fights, and then he might not get AJ. Because they told Luis Ortiz that. Did y'all forget about that? They told Luis Ortiz that he would get AJ if he went over there and signed. So what did Ortiz do? He went over there. Ortiz went over there, and he never did get the AJ fight. I mean, come on, man. Come on. Come on. Wilder said he wasn't guaranteed the AJ fight. Said he was not guaranteed. I mean, you know, can you wonder? And then who else over there? Demetrius Andrade over there? And he ain't really getting no great fights over there? So why, why are people going to the zone if, if we can't even fight the big names? Okay, I mean, are we going to forget the $50 million offer they got turned down? I mean, <laughs> and folks, he wasn't going to get $100 million to fight AJ. It was a part of a three-fight deal where supposedly AJ was included in a three-fight deal. So what would that make? I don't know, $30 million? <laughs> Maybe? To fight AJ? Wilder was saying, man, he could have done that in one fight. He can get closer to 50 to 100 million in one fight. And he didn't need his own to do it. But, you know, you let everybody else tell it. Deontay Wilder ducked the fade uh, because he turned down $100 million. You let everybody else tell it. But they'll ignore this stuff. But you know what, though? I- I'm actually, I'm with Mike Coppinger. I'm tired of boxing culture. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of, like, a guy can't even lose, man. People still get on Adrian Broner, but Adrian Broner lost fighting the best. I mean, it ain't like Adrian Broner didn't fight the best. See, that's the thing. Broner fought the best. And I got respect for him as a fighter. Okay, I don't think Adrian Broner's washed up. I don't think he's a has-been. I just think he went in there and fought some good-ass competition. And he lost to some good-ass competition. It is what it is, man. Stay strong. Stay uh, stay, uh, strong, Deontay Wilder. Your legacy not in jeopardy, man. Your legacy is not in jeopardy. You fought the best, and you went out fighting the best, and he's going to go in. He's going to be in history fighting the best.